All right. So I just want to talk about um, the latest project I've written, which is not due for about a month. But anyway, it's the one I haven't shown you yet, F210. And I'm just going to talk about it because I demonstrating it live is not going to be very practical, and I'll explain why. So a student asked me about memory analysis. And I said, memory analysis is important, and I happen to have an evidence file that I made several years ago, I think from Windows Server 2008 or maybe even XP, but anyway, it's a perfectly fine memory image of a Windows machine, and it's uh, not terribly big. So download this file, 130 megs, and unzip it, and then verify the hash value as usual. And now you have a memory image taken from a Windows machine, and it's going to show the most common artifacts that let you see what's been happening on a Windows machine. And as I mentioned in the lecture, you used to have to use uh, command line tools that were kind of limited and kind of irritating, and now it's all built into Autopsy. It's not considered a main feature in Autopsy, but I googled and Autopsy does have memory analysis. You have to go to Tools Plugins and turn on the experimental stuff in Autopsy, and then you will have memory analysis in Autopsy. So you create a new case, you import an image, and now when you import an image, you've got a new option, not just a disk image or a, uh, a local disk file. You now have a memory image file option. So you import the memory image using that option. And then you can just run um, this program, which uh, I thought, I think it's volatility it's running usual memory analysis program. I think it's just built into it. I don't see it actually written here anywhere. I'm pretty sure it's just running the volatility plugins. And it has a whole bunch of plugins that look for different artifacts. And it turns out most of these are pretty boring and don't really give you much important information. And it takes a really long time. By default, it selects them all. And your analysis will take about an hour. If you want to speed it up, you can turn them all off except the ones we're really going to use, which is these seven. And then it'll take you know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes, maybe even less to analyze. And this just runs this analysis on the file. Now, the thing that used to be a problem with volatility is it must know which version of Windows you're using, exactly which version. And there has to be a template for that version available. And for a while, they weren't keeping it updated well enough. But for this old image, anyway, it totally works. And I think it's much more vigorously used now. So I think even for modern versions of Windows, it'll work better. And this automatically does that. There's um, a plugin called Image Info that will guess what version you have, and then it can automatically apply it. And apparently, Autopsy takes care of all that automatically now, which is very nice. And several of the things I'm about to show you used to be very complicated and difficult to do. And now it's just automatically done by Autopsy, which is the wave of forensics. I've noticed for years I would teach these forensics courses, and I would go through books that were very detailed, and you'd be worrying about exactly how the bits are laid out on the disk and all that. But real professional forensic examiners don't even care about that at all. They just run an expensive tool like NCASE, and it does all that, and they just look at the output of the tool. And in this course, we're doing it a lot more that way. Autopsy just does the work for you, and you don't really need to know all the details. You need to select Image Info. Image Info is automatic which is very nice. You could select just these ones, and it'll be fine. So anyway, after you run it, then let it ingest. And um, then you'll have, up in your data sources, you'll have a new option called MemDump, which is the memory. And you expand this to get down into here. And now you'll see the module output from all the modules you ran. And I looked at them all. And I just picked out the ones that were interesting to make flags to turn in. So if you go to consoles, it will show you the command line commands that were executed on this machine. And I did quite a few command line commands. I added some new users with passwords. The net user command can be used to create a new user. And if you look at this, you'll see some a net user command I made, or a couple of them that failed because they're in the wrong format. But the one that says the command completed it successfully created a user. And so the flag is to find the password for the Waldo user. You can create users on Windows machines with net user, username, password, slash add. So you can find Waldo's password up there. That's the first flag, just see in command line commands. This one is awesome. And this one used to take like five complicated steps. Now it's all automatic. It dumps out the password hashes. It had to do quite a lot to do this. It had to get the syskey encryption and decrypt it. It had to go to several registry locations and combine that information. It's an old process that people used to 
teach in forensic courses and go through doing it manually. I don't see any point. Now it's all automatic. So these are the Windows password hashes. You have the username, then you have the last part of the security identifier to identify that user. Then you have the old LM hash, which is no longer used, so it always has this placeholder value A AED that's always the same. AAD, I guess. And then this part at the end is the um, modern NT hash, the, the long thing on the right side. And uh, you can see um, the hashes here. That hash value contains and can is connected to the password with a one-way process. Cracking it is relatively difficult, and that's the idea. It can tell whether you put in the right password by matching that hash. So you can get the hash for Waldo. All right, then LSA dump. LSA secrets is an area where Windows stores unencrypted passwords. And um, at least in older versions of Windows, you would often find the primary administrator password there unencrypted. And other things are there, like FTP services you connect to. Um, in later versions of Windows, they keep trying to remove things from LSA secrets. And I don't know how much is left in the latest version, but in this version, there was a password just sitting right there in the LSA secrets called the default passwords. Um, another thing that works from the memory file. The memory of file also contains information about all the network connections. So here's NetScan. This shows basically the output of, of uh, uh, net. I can't remember the command. It's not ipconfig. Netstat. Netstat minus A. That sort of thing. This shows all your listening processes and all your network connections. So I just made a flag. There is a process running on this machine listening on port 8080, and you can find it. Um, then there's PS list. You have a list of all the running processes on the machine. And again, I found one to give you for a flag. Um, and then shell bags. We've talked about these before, I think. Shell bags are quite important for um, forensic examiners. Shell bags contain the information about the location and size and view parameters of windows that have been opened on the machine. So it just records any window that had, like my computer, or connect to a network shared folder, or a USB drive, or anything that's been opened on a machine. There's records here. So it lets you see what's been going on on that machine in a very nice way. And in this case, you can see a network share on another machine. This was apparently a virtual machine, and it was connecting to a folder on the host. And you can get the name of that folder for a flag here. So again, you can see how that's very useful. Even if a user has like deleted a file and emptied the recycle bin and shredded all the unused space, there's still a shell bag entry showing that they did open that window, giving you some clue of what they've been doing. And then user assist um, records what's been run recently, another record of it all. And so here you can see something was run from the downloads folder in this PI232 folder. They ran something. And here you can see they ran something called evil2.exe. So, you know, this person was running suspicious things, and they ran something here. Again, you have another record of what they've been running lately. And I uh, guess that's it. You know, I thought I would have the, uh, huh, I guess I didn't include it. I would have thought I would have the, uh, the one that keeps track of 128 recent files. But anyway, this is good. There's just an example of things. And by the way, for extra, quite a few of those are extra credit. And if you actually crack, crack one of those password hashes, you can get extra credit. And uh, Autopsy does not automatically crack password hashes. You'll have to use other things for that. You can even use online password crackers, or you can use uh, a variety of password crackers you can get here and there. If you figure out how to do that, you'll get some extra credit. So that's all I wanted to show you. That's a bit of memory analysis, and it gets you used to the some of the common features you'll see on Windows machines. And the basic point, of course, is if you're doing anything on a Windows machine, um, there will be records kept all over the place, some of them in memory, some on the hard drive. But you know, if you want to do anything on a Windows machine and deny it later, you're in big trouble, because there are just tons of records of what's been going on. All right, well, that's it for this.